Alright, what's going on y'all man? This is your boy Romero the Fighter. Okay, so we back at it again with another video. So today, the last video I did was a Kwamba Q8 up review of the video that I recently did. So if you guys enjoyed that video, go ahead and check it out and see if you like that bicycle in particular. I talk about a lot of things like modding, buttons, the inside of the stick, and etc. So please go and check that out. Make sure you go um, like and comment comment subscribe and uh yeah let's go ahead and get to it so today i know we did fight stick but today we're going to talk about a particular fight pad that's in the industry right now in the fighting game community and what i'm talking about is the hori uh, fighting commander so this is basically works on ps4 pc and ps5 so if you're the type of person that's not really into fight stick hitbox you just a classic og that likes to play with either their palms or their hand uh or the claw motion yo this might be it for you but i'm gonna talk to you about my opinion with this controller so far and i'm gonna give you my thoughts and opinions about this fight bed in particular let's go ahead and get into it let's talk about let's see what all the features that they got going on so let's go right ahead and get into it all right so as you can see here button got a six button layout so you got your a square circle r1 r2 you know typical street fighter buttons and you know if you're a big Tekken fan of course you got your one two three four button so that way you can um, you know just play it the classic way like just in case if you want to do a certain execution with your it, it'll all be right here so and then mainly too that the buttons here are tactile as you can see you press X you press square you press circle triangle R1 and R2 it has that tactile feel and it feels pretty good I would say so far these buttons buttons they just feel pretty right okay so right here of course you got the home button you know just in case you play on PlayStation and you know you press the home you can hold it down you don't have to worry about turning it off because it's a wired pad as y'all can see it's wired it's not wireless just in case anybody ask about what it is um so right here too are the setting buttons uh the setting button right here where you can uh change the settings or change like a certain input on your button to see how you want your buttons to be set up kind of weird but uh you have to like kind of hold it down i believe and then you have to uh press and to replace buttons but i highly wouldn't recommend you to do it that way because there's an easier way that i'm about to show y'all in a few minutes uh with the software but we're gonna get into that in a little bit later so far we got a first fight pad so far well not first because mad Cat also has an analog fight pad it's not the first but this is the first one to ever have a octagonal direction input so if you ever play on a fight stick or if you ever play on a gamecube controller uh the gamecube controller has like different directions i think it was like 16 i believe if y'all can correct me on that for all my smash players just correct me on that because i got a couple of them myself i think it's like 16 prone like prone to uh the analog stick but this one is an octagonal gate so it particularly is like for like fighting games there are some people out there either use this as a shortcut or they probably use this as most likely you know as their regular like movement buttons which I don't have a problem with at all because I remember one time when I had my Xbox one controller broken I had to play on analog I had to force myself to learn how to play on analog and man it was a journey I tell you it was definitely a journey but you know at the same time I low-key kind of got used to it so it just taught me something like so much more than what I'm usually used to so I, I just had a good time with it you know but with the uh, analog C uh, you don't have to worry about like your analog stick drifting too because when you move it it's, it's going in particular direction so I would say if you're like really into like Shoto characters or characters that deals with a lot of uh, fireball and Shoryuken movement an analog stick is, is just right for you so of course you got the sensor uh, PlayStation sensor button or a PC the reset button if you if you decide to set it that way that this will be your button of course it'll press just like it but mind you if you play on the ps5 version it does not work as like the dual sense uh uh way of like using this button so if you're trying to play something that's like outside of like fighting games you probably might need to use a regular ps5 controller so i'm just gonna let you know that right now so it's pretty smooth so far um it's just a regular sensor button like for for like ps4 
and PS5 used to mainly PS4 because I think this is why it's really here. Of course, you got your option, um, your start button, of course, or your options button and your share button on your right side. Just typical buttons. I can't. I mean, I say I can't, but you know, I don't have to talk too much about it because y'all know what that is if you play on PlayStation. So far, I would say this is the most weird setup. The shoulder buttons had the most weirdest setup to me. I don't know why, but I would say that just in case if you do play, but at the same time, but if you only play on the face of uh, buttons, it's it's really more convenient for you. So let's say if you was playing like Street Fighter 5, right? And you was trying to reset because you know, Street Fighter 5 back then, you know, or now you have to reset your buttons to like L3, uh, R3 and, and L3, just depending on which mode you do. If you do trials, you gotta do L3. If you do training mode, you gotta do R3. So it's, it's really convenient if you set your buttons up right here but the sad part is with certain fighting games this kind of don't work i wouldn't reckon i wouldn't recommend them like the razor ryan as you can see i'm gonna give you an example right so i'm gonna pull out the razor ryan as you can see as you can see right you see how this has like an l3 l1 l1 r2 option switch you can switch back and forth with this so that's one thing i do kind of like about the razor ryan compared to the hori octa that's one thing i feel like they should have done a little bit better like make, like put a switch to where that way it could be like more convenient like not only for practice mode uh, and people who play shoulder buttons as well because like with street fighter because Tekken you can set it up for Tekken luckily but with street fighter 5 you cannot set the l3 and r3 buttons as your you know your heavy kick or your or your three punches or whatever buttons you want to set up so you got to keep that in mind for the street fighter 5 players and i don't know for sure particularly in six because six i completely played on hitbox so you, i just want you to keep that in mind that if you planning on to get this for a street fighter six you're going to have to commit to these buttons right here you definitely going to have to commit to these buttons no matter what the circumstances is because most likely with capcom fighters they will not have the l3 r3 as like button you can set up so you just got to keep that in mind but tekken on the other hand you definitely can like if you got like like two combination buttons that you want to set up you could definitely do that and most likely um it, you'll be okay but as far as you know street fighter it, it's going to be an issue so another thing i want to another feature i want to do of course you got the three switches like i said it's a pc you got ps4 and you got your ps5 it, do, it doesn't matter uh which three is on because on when you're playing on pc because you can enable all three of these and you can still be fine so this switch kind of really doesn't matter unless you playing on playstation 5 or ps4 those that's the only time it, like those switches are important so you just got to keep that in mind the top switch is basically just in case you press like the start button accident accidentally and you know how some people press start by accident and then you know they end up getting uh either their opponent points take the point either you get dq for it so pretty much if you are afraid that something will happen all you got to do is lock it and then as you can see here it will show a red light it'll let you know that it's locked that you can't press the start button and you'll just be fine <laughs> you don't have to worry about the pause or about the share or anything like that so i think that's kind of convenient uh what they're doing uh that's one thing the Hor um the razor ryan doesn't have compared to the hori octa so you just got to keep that in mind like if you try to be in tournament mode just lock your controller another thing i finally do want to point out and i, I wanted to say this for last because when it comes to fight pad i'm gonna tell you this right now like this is like one of the most common problems that fight pads have right so i'm gonna give you an example the razor ryan this is the closest to perfection i think the only problem and i think i got the first version of the razor ryan i heard that the second version had a little update to where they had like a pivot on their uh pad so this was the only thing i felt like it was missing everything else i felt like it was quality built and i felt like it's really good to use i just felt like you need to put a pivot in there if you got the first version of the razor ryan so i would recommend you to get the uh, second razor ryan but for the hori 
D-pad, right? I'm gonna let you know this right now. This is a 50-50. When I mean 50-50, some people are going to like this D-pad and some people are not going to like it. Me, it just, it, it depends on the game for me. It depends on the game. But I think like if I keep playing on the D-pad, I'll think I'll get used to it. And that's the thing about like controllers. Controllers will have its flaws, but if you stick with the controller uh, that you know, or you practice with it for a while, you'll definitely get used to it. And uh, most likely you'll be okay. So the one thing, the only problem that I do have with this is one, I feel like the D-pad is kind of too small. Cause I know from the previous Hori uh, fight pads, like the the OG commander and the, and the uh, what's the other uh, Hori fight pad? Let me, let me look, let me look. I had to make sure I got the name right. Uh, yeah, it's the Commander 4 Pro. Yes, the Fighting Commander 4. Yeah, that's the name of the uh, pad. So pretty much, I'll say the problem with this is like, as far as the D-pad, I'm sorry if it's got kind of got out of focus. One, the D-pad is like really small compared to the other Hori. So like my homeboy, um, Jason, for example, Jason's great. He he got the Hori Commander. He got the uh, the original one. I got the, the new Octa one. And the problem with this D-pad compared to the uh, other Hori is one is kind of small and two the diagonals you gotta really press on these diagonals because I heard that the Xbox one version was like kind of worse than this one and this is like more of the updated one pretty much like if you're a person that likes to do DPs and quarter circles you go it's like sometimes you'll have an easy time doing it and sometimes you'll have a hard time doing it it just depends on your play preference and how you play as a player so if I was say but I'll say this though like I do kind of prefer this pad like low key over the Razor Ryan when it doesn't have its pivot pivot because when I say that because sometimes like when you play play like 2d fighters sometimes you might get an accidental jump back like it's like you playing like a song with stick if you have like a very loose song with stick you most likely gonna do something by accident or have like an input error so I would say as far as the d-pad the d-pad I wouldn't say it's a improvement to the older fight pads but I would say it's it's cool for what it is right now I would say that it's not too bad but it's not too good either and then on top of that um you also gotta think about this as well if you're very heavy-handed you most likely gonna break this easily these are this pad is not for people who's heavy-handed so like for me I'm not heavy-handed my hands are kind of like average hands uh I don't press too hard uh I don't press too soft and I, I'll keep playing with but I, I consider myself playing this for Street Fighter 6. It just depends how I feel if I want to stick with stick or just play on this. Most likely I might be playing on this anyway. So it, it's pretty good so far. But speaking of the uh, D-pad, there's a software called the Hori Device Manager. So I'm going to show you the website. So I'm going to show you the web. Uh, if you're having a hard time finding the Hori uh, Device Manager, so what you want to do, I'm going to put the link in the description. So what you want to do is you, as soon as you see these two tabs you will go to support tab and then you're gonna go to download device manager app here uh, as soon as you install it you're going to have this software right so once you have this software you can open it up so basically what you see so far is you got profile one profile two profile three profile four so basically what the profile does is you know you can set your button up to a, to a certain movement and whatnot but the only thing that I'll say it is cheating so far is you add an extra movement a movement to your d-pad so me for me i just keep it the same because there's really no point in doing that and then the most uh particular part that i was telling you about this is the d-pad section that i call it the d-pad sensitivity if you like your d-pad to go in a huge range you can you can do that but if you want your uh if you want your d-pad to change to a certain dimension as you can see here like you see how sensitive everything is everything will kind of feel different so you got you got to press a little bit harder when it comes to the input but for me I, I keep I keep everything like the same because I need to have as much motion as possible but I would say this was this is pretty good for um Hori and you can change it for different settings for like the PS5 PS4 and PC but most likely for me I will keep it the same because I like when it comes to like Street Fighter I 
I would have to keep these motions intact. Like, cause if I want a full fireball, boom, got it. Get my Shoryuken, boom, got it. If I'm playing a charge kick, see if I do, if I uh, change a certain setting, it'll be just for the for a charge character. Like if I was playing like Bison, or if I was playing someone like E Honda, or a character just as similar. So you just gotta keep in mind that it's most likely that it, depending on your preference, you can set it to anything how you want it. You can set it to boom. See? That way, that way you won't have a um, accidental jump at and this is also good for MK players too so that way they can get their inputs right and make sure you can get a precise special move because I know sometimes you try to do back forward and it comes out just back and then you do something else by mistake so just keep that in mind that you will be fine as long as you just adjust your d-pad settings on how you want to so I think that's all I have to cover but I will say this you want to try out the uh, Hori Commander? Go ahead, but I will advise you. Like it feels lighter than the Razor Ryan. Oh, oh, and then one more thing too. It also comes with a, a headphone jack for all those competitor players that like to talk. But I highly doubt that because people be on Discord anyway. Talk talking on the games or whatnot because we don't do game chats like that anymore anyway but would i recommend this hori commander octa to you the playstation 5 version depends some people like this pad some people don't i like this pad personally when it comes to um street fighter and tech but like for people who, who likes it for like anime games or whatnot or anything it just depends on your preference it, it depends some people play on Xbox One controllers, some people playing PlayStation 5. Just because you have a certain controller, that doesn't mean you're going to be the best. It's all about hard work and how much you put in towards your controller. Because a lot of people want with pad, a lot of people want with stick, a lot of people want with hitbox. So I would say, like, if it if this is your preferred type controller, I would recommend you getting this. But if not, then hey, there's a lot more options out there. But I say for myself, I will recommend recommend this uh controller so if you guys like the video please comment make sure um you know tell me what you think about the horror commander octa in your opinion uh do you like it do you don't uh is it sensitive it's uh is it not doing your inputs right is it perfect for your inputs does the software help you out just let me know in the uh, comment below and this is your boy romero the fighter and i'll see you guys later and peace out